Questions uh, 33 to 36. Strongest chemical bases are hydroxides. Yes, and you know what? You can learn a lot from these passages. Uh, you know, you can use them also as a review because some of the information is simply some information. It's best that you know it ahead of time so that you can be more efficient during the exam. Um, their molar masses and solubilities in water are shown. Okay, so when you look at the table, and keeping in mind, you see the molar mass, so we know that if we have to calculate anything, we already have the molecular weights. And then it has the uh, mass of solute in 100 mils of water. But we've been told already that these are solubilities, because it says that in the, uh, in the paragraph above it. So these are solubilities, and I think you should not be surprised that the highest number is for NaOH. How many times? Have you seen NaOH going to Na plus uh, and OH minus? This is a strong base, a very strong base. And so um, it's, it's no surprise that it has the highest solubility on the chart. It's the most famous base. So um, we're going to uh, keep an eye on NaOH and see what it can do. So, and then uh, it says uh, pH of a solution gives some equations. pH is negative log hydrogen ion concentration. And of course, the purpose of a log, uh, logarithm, is to turn that into that. That's the whole idea behind logarithms. So students often get a little bit confused, but you know, pH goes up, hydrogen ion concentration goes down. It's always the opposite, and it's not because of the logarithm, it's because of the negative sign. That's why the trend is always uh, opposing each other. Hydrogen ion concentration goes up, pH goes down, and, and vice versa. And it's the same opposite relationships for all things that have that little P on it, like pKa, pKb, and so on, because they're all negative logs uh, of uh, the, their substituents, negative log Ka, negative log uh, Kb. So, and then uh, for, for, for the P, the relationship between pH and pOH, <laughs> You know, the, the way they wrote it, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a, you know, anyway, they did it on purpose because, um, uh, you know, it, it adds a new dimension to the problem. But, you know, if you already know that um, H uh, times OH minus is equal to 10 to the minus 14, if you already know that and this information is given, if you take the negative log of both sides, you end up getting negative log hydrogen ion concentration plus negative log OH minus concentration equals negative log 10 to the minus 14. That's another way of saying pH plus pOH is equal to the number 14. Because, of course, negative log 10 to the minus 14, you just bring the exponent to the front. And, uh, and if you're not comfortable manipulating logarithms, you absolutely need to go online and, 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 uh, and do some uh, review. Um, at at gamsat-prep.com, we do have a math page. And, uh, and you know, there's some uh, math, um, you know, uh, formulas and things to work out as well in the book. So anyway, um, first question. Consider saturated solutions of 25 degrees Celsius or three metal whatever. Which, which one of the following is correct? Okay, so for the pH values, okay. First, uh, the first thing that I would do is um, at the side of the table where, where we have those numbers, uh, you have um, uh, three numbers. You have 12.8 over here, you have um, 111, and you have uh, 108. So this is the most soluble uh, in solution. So because it has the highest solubility for um, OH minus, okay, high solubility, that means the most, most of this is happening. It's solubilizing, dissolving. So it has the highest concentration of OH minus. So this is going to be the highest. And uh, um, of course, this would be third because <laughs> it's going to be the lowest. And this is second, you know, because this is the solubility. So now the pOH, which is negative log OH minus, because of the negative sign, the higher that P OH minus goes, the lower the pOH goes. So then uh, this is going to be um, uh, the lowest. This will be lowest and this would be uh, highest. And then finally, uh, for pH, for pH, keeping in mind 
that pH plus pOH is equal to um, 14. So if the pOH is very high, then if the pOH is high, then the pH has to go low. So then for the pH, here we have um, this is going to be low and this is going to be high. So then the pH values are in the order of NaOH, um, then this one was second, and then last, the lowest, would be uh, lithium hydroxide. So 33 um, is question C, and this is classic. They like you to go high and low, but as long as you, you're, you work it out very cleanly, uh, you'll be safe on the exam. A solution is made by dissolving 80 grams of NaOH uh, in 100 uh, water and at 25 degrees Celsius. By the way, 25 degrees Celsius is, is standard temperature for liquids. Um, that's why Kw at 10 to the minus 14 applies. That's why pH and pOH is equal to 14. It's, it's at standard uh, temperature for liquids um, as opposed to standard temperature for gases, which is 0 degrees um, Celsius. Um, but zero degrees Celsius wouldn't make sense for standard liquid for, for uh, liquids because uh, they would freeze, <laughs> or, or many of them. So uh, 80 grams for NaOH, uh, that's, and looking at the uh, table, NaOH's molar mass is 40 grams per mole. So if we have uh, 80 grams, I would never write this out on an exam, but just in case, um, I don't want to lose anybody, so we have 80 grams, 40 grams per mole. The grams cancel, so moles comes on top, so we end up with 2 moles of NaOH. So now that we know we have 2 moles of NaOH, by the way, the reason we're calculating this is because we're trying to find out what the pH or pOH is. And the pH and pOH, they're dependent on negative log hydrogen ion concentration, negative log OH minus concentration. So we need to get the concentration in moles per liter. So we, we just got the moles, now we have to put it per liter, and then we can take the negative log. So here's the moles. Now we're going to put it over uh, per liter. It's 100 milliliters of water, which is... 0.1 liters, so then that is now uh, equal to 20, mo 20 moles per liter. Okay, so in case uh, you didn't know how to do the math, you just multiply top and bottom by 10. If you mul multiply the bottom by 10, you just get the number 1. Top by 10, you get the number 20. So that's what we're going to take the negative log of, and uh, this is going to give us our pOH. So we take the negative log of this, so we have negative log of 20 and um, th this of course is equal to pOH and so um, negative log of 20 we can work out like this equals negative log of obviously 10 times 2 okay and then according to our rules of logarithm if you have a multiplication you can split that into an addition so you have negative log of log of 10 plus the log of the number 2. Okay, so now log of 10, base 10, is just the number 1. And so we're going to have minus 1 minus log 2. So we have minus 1 minus log 2, because I let the minus sign inside. And all of this is equal to um, POH. Now, I know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14, so pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So that's going to be minus, minus, <laughs> yes, I said that on purpose twice, minus, minus 1 minus log 2. So now I'm going to let the minus sign come inside, and we get... 14 minus minus 1 is plus 1 minus minus log 2 is plus log 2. So that's equal to 15 plus log 2. And yes, you can do all that without a calculator in 1.5 minutes. And <laughs> that's all you have time for. So, um, so clearly the pH is going to be a 
above 15. We don't know exactly how much, but it's above 15. So 34, the answer is D. 35, um, alkali metal hydroxide react with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonate compounds. Blah, blah, consider the situation 100 grams of each are exposed to the atmosphere. Which of the following? Okay, remove from the atmosphere. Okay, so we're looking at 100 grams of each. 100 grams of each. Okay, so for lithium aluminum hydroxide, lithium aluminum hydroxide, <laughs> I was thinking of lithium aluminum hydride, which is a, a reducing agent uh, in organic chemistry, but that's not this. This is a base, and it's lithium hydroxide, and um, the, the other one uh, we have is... Uh, um, sodium hydroxide and uh, potassium hydroxide. Okay, so um, for lithium aluminum hydroxide, what does 100 grams mean? 100 grams means when you look at the molar mass in the table that you're provided, uh, the molar mass being around 24, so that means uh, 100 grams is about 4 moles, okay? Because if it's about, let's say, 25 grams per mole uh, for lithium aluminum hydroxide approximately, that's about 4, um, 100 grams would represent about 4 moles. And then sodium hydroxide at a uh, molar mass of 40 means it's about, it's about 2.5 moles. And then... Uh, Potassium hydroxide mass over 50 means that it's going to be less than 2 moles um, in, in 100 grams. So if everything is working according to stoichiometry, it means that there's what, way more of this being reactive. This, because this has more OH- available per, uh, per gram than these others have just because they're they're bigger they're they're so much uh, bigger so if you're only using a certain amount of grams this will react more the most this will be second and then this will be third so the answer um for 35 is a and and just so that it's clear to you they're talking about a reaction in the atmosphere they are not talking about solubility in water. So you can't confuse this question with the table they provided in terms of the solubilities in the table. That was a completely different issue. This is a new reaction that they've described that happens in the atmosphere or, or in outer space or, or whatever. Okay, so uh, question 36. Which of the following uh, shows the initial chemical reaction? Okay, well look, you know, if, if if, um, if, you know, if I'm sitting the exam, I'm going to underline initial chemical reaction because why are you asking me for initial? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you, it, normally Acer will just say, uh, what's the reaction or something like that, or what's the chemical reaction if you have whatever. That's normal, but to ask for the initial chemical reaction means that you might have more than one chemical reaction that seems reasonable. And so you have to look at what the, the initiating one is. <laughs> that occurs when a solution of uh, potassium hydroxide reacts with um, carbon. So, so we're talking with potassium hydroxide plus uh, carbon dioxide. So they're asking what happens here. So um, in, the, in the first reaction, answer choice A, well, that's just not going to happen because we know these are ions, right? This is K plus. OH minus, you know, uh, we, we know that it's very soluble. We saw the numbers, it's in the table, but hopefully you knew that already because in organic chemistry, you get this stuff all the time. So NaOH, KOH, you know, they dissociate in solution. And so um, there's no way that that's going to make a solid on the other side, which is answer choice A. You know, it's going to be um, an aqueous solution um, because uh, it has uh, dissolved. Then answer choice B, uh, we have uh, something there that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. In fact, okay, I'm going to give you the minimum amount you need to know, and then I'm going to tell you some uh, background stuff. So the minimum amount you need to know is forget uh, the reaction and just read carefully. <laughs> because uh, in question 35, uh, it says alkali metal hydroxide. 
So this is an alkali metal, this is an alkali metal hydroxide, react with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonate compounds. So we want to see hydrogen carbonate compound. So, um, and this is all in solution. So there is only one answer that shows you this. And this is the minimum you would need to know to get the right answer, and that is answer choice B. It, it, it describes exactly what you know, Acer said. Now, if you are interested <laughs> to know, of course, this carbon is bonded to oxygen, so that means carbon is delta positive. Oxygen's to the right on the periodic table. It's delta negative. This is a strong base. It's also a strong nucleophile, meaning it's attracted to the carbon nucleus. So the OH uh, is going to want to attack here, and then some electrons... Uh, um, uh, would uh, would go up. Of course, we would get now um, uh, hydrogen. We would get HCO3 because the new oxygen is going to be a part of this molecule, and hydrogen's there as well. We have HCO3, and then we don't have to worry about potassium. It's just floating around. If you're in the first or second group of the periodic table. These are spectator ions, so you know they're just uh, sort of hanging around. Uh, they don't get involved in a reaction. They're not going to make a covalent bond somewhere, but they can do some ionic association because opposites attract. But they don't get too involved. Anyway, in the second stage, and this is why they said initial reaction, because in the second stage, KOH, uh, you know, another uh, equivalent of KOH. Uh, now um, can act like a uh, base and the OH minus can act like a base being a proton acceptor and then can deprotonate um, this uh, molecule. This is actually, most people call it bicarbonate, but um, they want to call it hydrogen carbonate, no problem. So, um, so it can deprotonate the, the, this and so then you end up with a carbonate and that's why you see, as one of the answer choices, um, uh, answer choice D, where you, where you have the um, two equivalents of potassium, so K2CO3. Uh, so you have that um, aqueous, which means really it's dissolved, it's in solution, and, um, but answer choice D is the complete reaction. Uh, that occurs and the OH minus when it deprotonates this it makes water so um, that would be the complete reaction but answer choice B you could have answered not knowing all that and um, no problem and if um, you uh, want to uh, read up more about ions and solubility uh, you can do that in uh, these sections and then uh, for acids and bases uh, you can do that um, in these sections